Well, hi guys. Um, like Sean said, I'm going to be talking about a developer-centric use case uh, called Sensu Check Output Metric Extraction, um, and we'll be using InfluxDB and Grafana in this. Um, so if you've heard of or worked with Sensu before, right on. Um, I'll primarily be speaking today about um, Sensu Go, which is a revamp of the original Ruby project. Uh, while we've achieved uh, parity design with the original project, there's also some improvements largely surrounding metrics, which is what I'll be diving into shortly. So really quickly. Oh, whoops. I just wanted you guys to stare at my picture a little longer. <laughs> All right, can everyone see that? Um, my name's Nikki Atia. Uh, like Sean said, I'm a software engineer at Sensu. Uh, I'm a New Yorker at heart, but I'm currently here local in Redondo Beach in Southern California. Um, I am a work from home dog mom, uh, and when I'm not solving complex distributed systems problems at Sensu, you can catch me out here in Hermosa playing beach volleyball. Um, to start, your monitoring stack should not cost you stacks. So yes, I'm a millennial and avocado toast is like really expensive, but the good news is your monitoring solution doesn't have to be. The stack I'll be talking about today, Sensu, InfluxDB, and Grafana are all open source tools with enterprise counterparts. While I'll be using InfluxDB as my time series database of choice in this particular use case, you're not limited to just that option because Sensu actually supports a wide variety of built-in metric protocols and um, basically limitless plugin uh, potential to store them. So really quickly, what is Sensu? Um, in short, it's a monitoring event pipeline which collects, processes, routes, um, different event types including discovery, availability, telemetry, and alerts. Uh, the pipeline makes Sensu extremely powerful and completely customizable, so just think Nagios on steroids. And if Nagios on steroids isn't a super helpful metaphor, don't worry, I'll explain a little bit more later. So push first pull, why not both? So Sensu offers multiple mechanisms to monitor performance metrics, whether that be for your application or for your infrastructure. So firstly, StatsD is essentially a metric aggregator used to collect values such as gauges, counters, timers, sets. Um, and each Sensu agent has an embedded StatsD daemon that'll listen for that UDB traffic. Uh, Sensu service checks collect data on monitored nodes um, and follow the same protocol as Nagio service checks. So hopefully that word's a little familiar with some of you. Um, so each Sensu agent will run that collection of checks um, and then They'll output that data, produce an e exit code, and indicate a specific state. So Sensu will parse the output um, of that standard out and produces metrics, so hence metric extraction. I'm going to focus a little bit more on the service check side in this talk, but I'll be pu publishing a blog post fairly soon uh, that goes into a little bit more detail about perf metrics and StatsD. So if you want to see how to track all of your API calls in less than 30 lines of code, you can check it out at blog.sensu.io. So why not both between APM and infrastructure monitoring? Spoiler alert, the more complex your stack gets, you'll probably want both. So to start with output metric extraction, uh, Sensu currently supports four different metric formats, InfluxDB line protocol, OpenTSDB, Graphite, Nagios performance data, uh, the key you see below each um, type, for example, InfluxDB line, Graphite plain text, uh, that would be the identifier that you would use to uh, define in a given Sensu check configuration. Uh, this determines which format in the check output should be parsed and mapped um, to the field output metric format, which you can see there. Um, and then there's also a simple metric uh, below each of these formats. Um, for the sake of consistency, an example of metric tagging isn't used um, or isn't shown, but for all of the formats that actually do support metric tagging, uh, so does Sensu. So on to the Sensu check configuration. Uh, here we're defining a check uh, called check CPU influx DV. Um, it'll be set to run every 10 seconds on any node that you want it subscribed to. Uh, the command you see down at the bottom is just a simple shell script um, that's going to print out CPU usage in InfluxDB line protocol. Um, and then the last two fields you see um, on the left of the screen uh, indicates that check output metric extraction will occur. So the event that is produced uh, contains not only ex execution context such as status, output, duration, et cetera, but you'll have entity information about your monitor node, and lastly, slash most importantly, the extracted metric, which you can see the cube API server um, CPU value. 
I know staring at configuration can be a little boring, but take my word for it. It's magic, and it should just work. Uh, one more lame slide, and we'll get onto the cool stuff. So now that we have a collection of metric points within a Sensu event, what do we do with it? Uh, Sensu has tight integrations with many time series databases, so you can just pick one. Uh, I accidentally wrote an InfluxDB handler um, because Influx has a super simple Golang cl client. And Go is my language of choice. Um, and contributing to our open source plugins is actually that easy. Uh, this was previously an enterprise feature, so take advantage of it. I've linked the source code right here below. Um, and then the handler configuration you see on the right of the screen um, takes that event data and invokes the Go binary called Sensu Influx DB Handler. So this accepts configuration options um, as either command line flags or environment variables. Um, and then additional metric tag enrichment can happen as a part of the uh, Sensu event pipeline. Um, so such as this one, it'll eventually accept that event data through standard in. Um, and then the metrics contained here uh, are then sent off to the configured time series database. So to quickly overview the monitoring event pipeline, um, the Sensu backend will send service checks to monitor nodes with installed Sensu agents. The agents will execute the check, extract the metrics in any of the four supported formats, and then the backend will receive that event data and pass it through the monitoring event pipeline. So in this specific use case, you can filter this event only if it contains metrics, mutate that event to enrich any metric tags and add additional context about the data and source um, of the metrics, and then you would handle the events by um, sending them off to a time series database. This diagram folds back in stats D metrics, which we touched on a bit earlier. Um, additionally, another integration, another integration with the Prometheus metrics endpoint. So essentially, any telemetry event that the agent receives will be processed by the backend, which is important because in order to have complete visibility of your app, system, services, infrastructure, you'll likely have to receive data from multiple sources. Now this workflow right here is just telemetry, so it's great that there's a single entry point for all of this data, but as you start to add different event types like availability and alerts, you'll be thankful that the pipeline is dynamic enough to support uh, reusability all under the same hood. So. Raise the roof, because your monitoring's all under one roof. All right, on to the cool stuff. Uh, this is a quick screenshot of a Sensu dashboard, which prioritizes critical events over normal statuses. Uh, it's rather backend and API driven, so while the Sensu dashboard does provide excellent visibility into the overall health of your system and the state, it doesn't directly visualize time series data. So enter Grafana. Uh, time series analytics and visual visualization uh, provide a critical and convenient overview of your infrastructure. I'll leave the fancy Grafana dashboards up to you experts here at GrafanaCon, but I did want to show how the all under one roof methodology can simplify your workflow and telemetry. In this dashboard, there's a single data source as far as Grafana is concerned because we let Sensu do all of the heavy lifting. Uh, the Sensu checks shown here are displaying metrics from both Graphite and Influx. And while the StatsD daemon is tracking all of the API calls and request weights, rates. So I'm actually dogfooding the Sensu API in this um, dashboard, or as we like to call it, internally drinking our own champagne, because it sounds a little bit nicer than eating your own dog food. Um, although I'm a backend dev myself, I'd say this dashboard is pretty sleek. So thanks, Grafana, for making that easy. Um, and to close, here are some great resources that can help you take a deeper dive into metrics and telemetry with Sensu. Uh, be sure to come say hi to us at our booth. Um, and we might have time for questions. Sean might hop back up here. But if not, we'll be around, so come find us. Um, but thank you, guys. Uh, so we have one um, from Kelsey. So what would be something uh, that differentiates Sensu from something like Telegraph? So I think what makes Sensu really unique from pretty much anything in the space is, you know, it's, it's focus around pipelining. I think the way that you can collect via a whole whack of different ways, even like stats, D, service checks, um, and then you can really extend beyond that, and then filter, mutate, and handle it in so many different ways. I think that's what sets it apart. I think you can think of it as a very, like, domain-specific Kafka kind of thing. Great. Uh, and I think we have one other question. Um, so are there uh, plans for Sensu to support Prometheus-like remote write? So for example, storing um, the metric data into something like Cortex. Um. Yeah, so we've got uh, the Prometheus collector. So that allows us to collect 
uh, metrics, telemetry data from Prometheus endpoints. Uh, that's how we also integrate with Kubernetes. Um, and then we normalize that information and allow us to you know, send it to any time series database, whether it be Influx, OpenTSDB. Um, and I, I foresee us doing like a Cortex or just a, a standard prom writer. No, it, the, it wouldn't be very difficult to do. OK. Um, so we have Sarat who's asked, uh, do we have uh, event handlers for CI, CD, CD pipeline tools like Drone uh, and Jenkins? Oh, Jenkins, yeah. Um, well, what doesn't exist for Jenkins? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, what's great about Sensu is, yeah, there's, there's even plugins out there for CI tools, uh, ticket systems, as well as you can do like auto remediation with Sensu. Like, there's, there's really no limitation of what you can do with it, although you probably shouldn't do certain things, but. <laughs> and I think we'll one, one last question because you brought up uh, mainframes. Um, so, with the growing mainframe environment, uh, does Sensu support AS400? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we run on AIX uh, and a number of other platforms. Um, I don't know which specific models, though. <laughs> mainframes. Um, if you if you are running Sensu on something like that, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and one last question from Neil: uh, Can we bring our own events, or do we have to go through Sensu Check? Uh, the agent has an API. Our backend has an API. So if you can. Uh, transform your event format into the Sensu event format. We can just take it, ingest it. And um, yeah, I think that would probably be the easiest way. Or you could use a check to pull it. OK. All right. Well, John, Nikki, thank you very much. Right. Thanks so much. Thank